Welcome to Amateur Radio World. And Welcome to Amateur Radio World. This is W4ARW. My name is Joshua, and today I'm going to be walking you through my installation of the MFJ 2010 off centerfed dipole. Okay, so step one is to show you what I've got going on here. This is my G5 RV. It used to run from my mast here by the house over to that very tall tree farther out. Now, I have some acquaintances who call G5 RVs extended dummy loads. That might be a little bit of an understatement, but it's definitely not the most effective antenna because of the 2 to 1 SWR on all the bands. Now, I'm a more band restricted person. I don't actually travel much outside of 40, 20, 10, um, 15, 17, just basic bands. I don't do anything on 12, don't do anything on 60, nothing on 160, and hardly any ever 80 meters. So this antenna is um, having a 2.5 to 1 SWR for bands I don't even use. There, maybe, maybe that's going to become my mascot right there. Okay, but basically the point is I'm having high SWR just to get performance on bands that I don't use that often. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down, and then this is going to be a, become a field day antenna or something like that, and I'm going to replace it with something that does not require a tuner and does m only the bands that I'm more interested in. 40, 20, 10, and 6, that antenna does and three of those I'm on quite often so we're going to replace that and way up there you can see my diamond antenna coming down from it let me try and find it it's a little bit bright to be using the zoom here but this wire you see coming down it is the G5 RV leg so what I have to do is pull the G5 RV down and what I've done when I put this up, and I'd suggest you all do it, leave plenty of slack in your tie-off so that you can run it up and replace the antenna because as this goes up, the antenna comes down. So that's what we're going to do, and I'm going to get this tied on. But first we have to hook up that balin following the instructions online on MFJ.com. So let's do that right now. All right, so the instructions online, what they say to do is lift the toroid out of the way and bring in your coax install it to two mounting points inside of the weatherproof box tie wrap the cord in place push down the toroid and close the weatherproof box this box design is not what I receive and I was expecting this because the reviews online say the same thing let me show you what's going on here this comes with an SO239 chassis mount on the bottom. What it tells you to do is bring coax in the side. There's supposed to be a hole in this box, which there isn't. It says to bring it in through the side, lift this out of the way, solder it to the two lugs that don't even exist, and bend this out of the way. So what I'm going to do is put this in the air as is, and test the SWR like this with the SO239 connector if it doesn't work what I will do is I will disassemble this and where the two SO239 points are soldered I'll just solder my coax directly in like that so that's what I plan on doing if this doesn't work one more critical note this box is just slapped together plastic if you will so you're gonna want to put a large amount of silicone on the edges here which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it off camera. But I'm going to weatherproof this box with silicone here. And I'm going to put a ring of silicone around the SO239 connector as well because I can see the construction of this. Well, the material is weatherproof. It is not water sealed. So definitely going to want to do that before we install it as well. And hopefully this is pre-designed so that all I've got to do is screw coax on without modifying the balin at all. So time for step three alright so I open this up and I got silicone around the entire outside here and 
also inside of this SO239. You can't really see it, which is a good thing. And got it all crammed in there. So once this dries, it'll be waterproof. We're not looking at any rain too soon. So I should be safe to put this up, although it is overcast. All right, so I wasn't able to record me pulling it up, but it's up there. Um, there's the end insulator. Here's our Balin box with the coax running down, and we're going to dress that out in a few minutes here. That runs to our mast, which um, this black wire here is a guy wire. And then our mystery dipole runs out here. You can see it's Balin. And those are the two HF antennas I've got mounted to the mast. So there's two antennas, a ground wire, and three guy wires coming off the mast. And then this beam, I've just been working on and testing. It's not in its final spot. There's too many trees around here to have it rotate freely. But, so, out of the four antennas that I have for HF, which are the two that are up right now in finalized condition, and then the butternut vertical, and this beam, which are of my four HF antennas that I'm going to be actively using. Three of them are completely installed, and the beam antenna will have a separate video when I put that up, and that'll be the last of what I need to do to get my semi-permanent HF antenna installation done here. All right, so here's the bottom of 40 meters. It's 1.14, and about the middle, I'm sorry, that's not the middle. Somewhere about the middle, it's about 1.13. And then we exit the band at 1.5 to 1. This is a little bit higher than I measured it previously. It seems like conditions do have a little bit of effect on the SWR of this antenna. It was a 1.3 to 1 the first time I measured it. So minor condition changes can affect this. And the other thing that could be affecting it is I had it screwed into the tuner the first time as well, which seems to lower the SWR slightly even though I'm just running direct without any capacitance or inductance added. So anyway, at the bottom of 20 meters, 1.37, drops down pretty quick, really low, all the way up, and we exit at 1.18. So you can see as I go downward, very flat on 20 meters almost the entire time. The entire voice portion is under 1.15. So let me get this back where you can see it. All right, so we come into 10 meters at 1.7 to 1 and at 28.400 1.25 and at 29 well, that's a little bit high. At 29 about a 1.5 to 1. So like I said, I had this running into the tuner the first time I tested it, and that seems to lower it down. I'm not actually using the tuner, I'm just using the bridge as an SWR meter and power meter. I'm just going direct to the antenna, but it does seem to lower it down. It kind of acts like a matching network, I guess, maybe. But let's try 60, or um, 50, sorry. 1.42 and it goes up very rapidly and once we hit 53 megahertz we got about a 3 to or a 2.6 to 1 and then exiting the band at 2.8 to 1 so definitely the coax and antenna are bringing the SWR up in their current position because I did measure this once off camera and it it only went up to a 2 to 1 or a 2.5 to 1 on 6 meters and was much flatter on the 10 meter band as well 40 and 20 stayed about the same so I will mess with the coax and stuff and maybe update you guys once I get the antenna wore in a little bit more that way you can kinda of see what's going on but it does seem like as I move the coax around and uh, use the tuner and whatnot, it does seem to modify the SWR um, by about 0.3, so definitely makes a difference. But there you have it. 
satisfied with the antenna on 40 and 20 meters. I've made a few contacts so far and they've all gone nicely. Good reports. And this coax, I know it's good. It's 100 feet. Uh, it does bend a good bit. And there is a little bit of extra slack that I think if I pull in and make it straight and just kind of maybe make the coax a straight shot to the sh shack instead of bending it around as much, I think that'll bring it down a little bit too because that's how I had it before and it worked much nicer. All right, 73s, God bless, and we will see you guys hopefully next Sunday. I'm going to try and start putting them out according to the channel art, but I've just been real busy lately, so I haven't had a chance, but I'm going to try and start putting them out every Sunday. 73s, guys.